welcome back into the porch at the Woodhaven studio here, the podcast city. Got with me today the famous, the one and only Billy Yargis. Billy, I know, man, I tell you what, good friend of mine, Hannibal, Missouri. That's your hometown. That's right, Mike. Thanks for having me. I tell you, we uh, got to have you in here to Alabama for a few days. You're on vacation trying to turkey hunt and. We did the quick boogie down to Georgia, and you killed a fine gobbler down there. That was fun, and got to spend a little time, and we went one day here and heard some turkeys, but it didn't, wasn't even nothing in our zip code, and then went to Georgia, and then we run back here, and we started back, and we had a cold, breezy morning yesterday. It wasn't hardly much talking. This morning is a little better, and we had some birds talking and working, but, you know, it's, it's the difference between working them and calling them and I won't tell you what now. I enjoyed hearing you calling. That that gum calling you do, you you something else on that mouth calling. Well, well, all the calls you used all kind of calls. Well, thanks, Mike. I I appreciate appreciate you having me down. And uh, good thing I went to Georgia because these Alabama turkeys they're not they're not cooperating at all. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these PhD hard hat and flat jacket yeah. turkeys up here that I hunt in in this uh, in these woods up here I hunt. But uh, you know it's uh, always fun. I tell you what, both me and you both, you know, we said. We know we're turkey hunting when we're sitting up here, and we we didn't have a podcast. I mean, I'm <laughs> <laughs> not dead, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get you get charged up when you get to talking about turkeys and turkey calling and turkey hunting, and you know, I was listening to you. I mean, uh, and we're so glad to have you on the Woodhaven team, and you do a great job. You and your wife Nanette do a great job for us, and we're just you know super pleased that uh, y'all got to come down and visit, and 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 proud to have you as our fam- and part of our family. I, obviously woodhaven is family that's good to be it's good to be a part of woodhaven yeah and uh you know you run that mouth call and uh i remember the first uh grand nationals you won of course then i remember some other ones you won i think well you won three of them now yeah three of them man i'll tell you what that's awesome and all the other contests you won i mean contest calling you told me a little behind the scenes stuff but you know Listen to you in the woods. That's 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 good stuff. I mean, on the on the stage, that's just it's impeccable. But in the woods, it's even you know to me, it's even better because it's out there in the real deal. Heard you run different calls and everything, but two or three things I want to know today, and I hope our listeners will enjoy. Tell me how you even got. I mean, tell me tell me about Billy Yargis and tell me how you got into turkey calling, and then I want to know about what you're thinking in the woods how you know contest calling versus woods calling and give me give me some of that billy yargis 101 and and you know some of that turkey hunting stuff yeah one of the big things uh i got into turkey hunting when i was 13 years old and uh, i don't know from the first time i started running a mouth call i mean that was the main call for me even even back in uh called my first bird in well, I had my first bird coming the first year I, I hunted them, and I thought I needed to stand up so I'd get a, a good that's shot. Right. And that, that didn't work out very well, that's as right. you know. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah, that's Don't a... <laughs> stand up when the turkey's coming. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I went from there, and, and I had people telling me that I needed to go to a calling contest, and I, I didn't want no part of it. I said, I don't, I don't need to do that stuff. And I got to a point where I was buying turkey calls uh, one year and, and go back and buy the exact same call the next year, and it wasn't the same. And right. I got into turkey calling and the competition calling, mainly because I wanted better turkey calls. I thought if I get on somebody's team, I, don't, I'm, I wasn't worried about Grand Nationals, U.S. Open, Mid-America Open, or, or any of those things, or the world. I mainly just got on there to... Uh, to try to get better calls, have somebody build me the best, you know, the best calls so I can get right. the same ones every year because uh, I wanted the best tools that I could go that I go hunting with. I right. uh, had no idea that I was going to start building calls and and be a world and a grand national champion and all that stuff. Uh, God really blessed me. It took it to a, a whole new level. Um, the difference between, to me, between competition calling and hunting is when to do what, uh, in a competition, of course, you want to sound exactly like a, a real live wild hen turkey. I mean, that's that's the whole key right there. In a competition call, they, they don't let you have no they don't let you have no leeway though. In the woods, it's fun. You just be, I, I, you know, you, I hear you doing stuff, and 
it sounds just good to me in the woods, but that that stage mm-hmm. stuff, it you know, it, they, they yes, you're the feather judges in the woods, and them other judges is that panel of guys behind them curtains. That's sometimes they can be critical. Oh yeah, yeah. The the turkeys can definitely be more forgiving than yeah. a, than a person can, and what a person wants to hear is, is totally different. I've hunted with a lot of different people, and and everybody does things a little bit different. Uh, either the way they hunt or even the way they call two turkeys in the woods. You know, today we worked a bird that uh, we snuck up and we knew they was getting tough. We wanted to get close. And we popped up. I just kept peeping up over the hill. Kind of like a turkey does, you know, one of them scared turkeys when they're looking for old boss gobbler. And I just kept sneaking up and then I popped my head up and I look a little bit and get back down and go a little bit closer till finally I could see him. Uh, then we had eyeballs on him. I knew what we could do. He only gobbled one time. We couldn't get him gobble again. And then we moved around. Everything I knew, uh, these birds down here are about like the birds at home as far as when they get pressured. And that's anywhere you go. And I don't care what, uh, whether the reels, merriams, or, or what they are, or easterns, you had to start calling soft. You had to do the real stuff, the purrs and the clucks and the, and the little soft yelps. Uh, I did that, and he turned around, and he walked away. <laughs> So I didn't get judged very good go, today. <laughs> go figure. But, I mean, you, you mentioned something, too, about time in the woods and being uh, hunting with other guys. I mean, I always enjoy that, too, because I, I think I'm always gleaning something. I think I'm a gleaner. I mean, I'm going to try to pick up all the little crumbs I can and try to figure stuff out. And it's always fun to hear how somebody else, we all can have our own idea of how we turkey hunt and, and then to come alongside other turkey hunters with you know sometimes you learn something from you know you a younger turkey hunter somebody but you and i both about the same age and got a lot of experience in the turkey woods and you know you kind of feel that and see that but i enjoyed hunting with you and and uh i mean you know everybody does have different styles sometimes the morning dictates and the turkeys dictate and but it was you know it's always i always enjoy that and i always like being around glad you know coming in and get to see how you do because you run a call really really well i, I run a mouth Thank call you. just almost defensively you know i just run it enough to sometimes i used to run mouth calls a lot and i got so interested in the pot calls and the box calls and other kind of stuff and i'm always working on something in the woods for maybe next year the year down the road or three years i'm always working on some kind of design or prototype in the woods and uh but then but the mouth call stuff i'll tell you what that a, a guy could really tell us about your idea of 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 turkey calls what what what, what do you see and what should a guy look for in mouth calls you know uh beginner or you know kind of proficient and then what else should he look for in in calls in general and what you know what do you what because i've noticed you run the mouth call you run that real hen box call boy you get you wear that thing and you had to slate one of the cherry slates that you you know you kind of got something you kind of got that billy yargus repertoire you kind of got that feel good you know this is what i this is what billy likes to tell the turkeys and i noticed that so tell me what how you pick or how you go about doing that well one of the big one of the big things is things that's worked in the past if it worked on this turkey then you got to try it on the next one and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't uh i get my mouth call is my main call it always has been uh, i love a box call that real hen box call is as real as it gets you know just and then the stuff that you was doing on your cherry class or i don't know what what was you running the yeah, other day was the, it a, the crystals the I, crystal I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've run uh with you i've run the the crystal uh some aluminum and slate you know but anyway i but and but that but it sounds real when you're back you know you was behind us that very first morning and you was you was clucking and i've heard i've heard hens do that before they start clucking and it's and they and you get into a rhythm of just them it isn't real loud loud aggressive cutting but Mm -hmm. the clucking you get to doing it turns into some cutting and you throw a few purrs in there that's turkey when you're when you're doing stuff like that it's uh when i'm running my real hen box call i will i will throw in my mouth calls you know and go coincide both of them together like two hens walking Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm cutting on my i'm cutting on my real hen and then next thing you know and i'm right in the middle of it i start yelping on my mouth call and right about time i'm done with that with that yelping and i start yelping on the box call and i'll go back and forth and as i'm walking i can't tell you how many times i've fired birds up 
uh, early morning or late or late in the morning. It might even be in the evening if you hunt all day. It's right. it's uh, it's poison to get one to get you know get started. Now you get into some public hunting like we're into right now, and uh, I picked up pretty quick that I, that isn't going to work as well as just sliding in and doing some blind calling. Uh, or if you are walking, just do some real light yelping. I've had that back home too, where you just do some real light yelping, and man, I'd have draw a gobble out of one because it, to him, that's what the hen turkeys are doing. Yeah. If they're in an area, and it's not just with pressure from people hunting them, it could be you're in an area where the coyotes or the bobcats or anything else are coming in and trying to get them every time they're making a loud call. The gobblers are quit gobbling sometimes because of it. Doesn't mean they won't come. They just, uh, they want to keep their mouth shut so they don't have somebody in there trying to eat them. Right. I mean, that's, uh, and that's, uh, we've seen a lot of coyote sign. I mean, chicken and the woods roads and everything. It's just, you know, they, we've talked and talked about predation, the coon, raccoons and the coyotes, bobcats, and they having their, they're having their way on the turkeys, so, so to speak, you know, I, obviously the trapping and stuff ain't what it used to be they y'all do much trapping and predator control in missouri no there's 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 people who do but no i mean i don't i mean if uh if i see a coyote i'm gonna shoot him right. um, i had a coyote mess up a hunt a couple of years ago that uh, i didn't shoot him the first time he messed it up so i moved across the holler got the turkey going again and he messed it up on me again he come right on over there and uh, I kind of messed up his world then. <laughs> he was looking for a meal. I tell you yeah. what, them, them things is, you know, predators, big-time predators. And, but uh, this, uh, you said this terrain here in Alabama is kind of kind of like what you, some of the, or somewhat like you, some rolling hills. This is pretty mountainous up here. Yeah, you get down below Hannibal along the uh, Mississippi River. Uh, there's some areas down in there that's got, that's got the same kind of hills down there that's, uh, that can be brutal sometimes. I'm noticing now that I'm, I'm, uh, sound like a freight train when i get to the top <laughs> when i used to just go to the top i might sweat a little bit but i'd still be going pretty good yeah well, like i said <laughs> me and you ain't no we talked about it earlier we me and you ain't no spring chickens no more we're talking about yes, dylan fact. going to get in the truck today you know? <laughs> <laughs> i mean me and you come dragging up out of the holler i appreciated and, it and, and and uh dylan said about something about go get the, you know go get the truck and i said yeah you put them 23 year old legs. i remember what it's like to have 23 year old legs do it oh you? yeah you know i could just like i said with this just go over them right just let's go see what's over the next and you know i didn't need a nap back in either no but. i'll tell you but I'm, <laughs> I'm like i said we were here laughing before we started just don't go to sleep on the podcast but yeah well, you know like you said if you ain't turkey hunting and tired then you ain't doing much turkey hunting. yeah you, you ain't know, hitting you, it hard enough you that's for sure hard enough <laughs> and, uh, you know sometimes you know a lot of folks that talk to me about and or they talk about going turkey hunting and I've always kind of said that uh, you ought to go when you can and, and then and go when you feel like you can be there because if you got your mind on something that's – the woods sometimes is my melting pot. That's where I get to, in the woods with the Lord and this time and what you know, kind of I, – I, I, you know, and I enjoy hunting and being out there, period. And uh, But, you know, if the, the stresses and the strains of things aren't, aren't melting out there, then you need to – to me, I want to be out there every chance I can and enjoy it. Do you feel the same? I mean, you know, do you feel some days? I mean, I know sometimes, I mean, you talked a little bit off camera over the visit of the weekend, you know, the stresses and strains of running a business and have family stuff and this, just stuff in general sometimes can just kind of get you down. And sometimes the woods is the, the way it absorbs it off of it. Sometimes you just need to be you just got to come you know you got to be at work and you got other obligations and you can't be in the woods but i try to be there every chance i can but i, I guess that was a big long-ended question for you but how do you feel i mean i mean kind of what i was saying there you go when you can and, and you enjoy it because you're on vacation so you want oh, you're yeah. trying to hunt every minute you can i noticed that yeah i try to i try to be in the woods as much as i possibly can uh sometimes you got to come in and eat and there's times i'll pack me a lunch and uh, there's times I'll even kick back when I'm blind calling, just sit down and think, well, I'm going to sit here for an hour or so and might even nod off every once in a while. I don't do that too much. I'm always scared I'm going to miss something. You never know when that gobbler is going to sneak in and not give you a, not I've give took, you a gobble. <laughs> I've took some good naps in the woods, yeah. you know, <laughs> that might've been some of that sure enough power napping out there. But yeah, I mean, 
I think you can, if you're in the woods, though, I mean, the old cliche everybody always says, you can't kill them on the, from the couch. That's right. Yeah, and if you're in the woods and you can spend time, the more time you spend in the woods, the better woodsman you're going to be. But I want, sometimes, you know, guys ask me questions, and, and um, but I talk about seat time and feet time. And there's that you 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 hear what I mean? Seat time or feet time? You you gain it. You can gain with feet time, and you gain with seat time. And a lot of I catch myself sometimes using that seat time. That that p a t i e n c and the e is silent. That, that I'm oh, learning yeah. that new game. Of that re, I'm learning to. Maybe it's just because I'm older and I'm taller and everything. Taller. Get wiser. Get yeah, wiser, wiser, Mike. <laughs> you know, I like to I mess with Dylan a lot of time. I said, no, nah, I'm going to call him right here. You know, I ain't going over. I'm yeah. gonna, he can use his feet and he can come <laughs> over here. I ain't going over there. But, you know, and used to, I can be I'm like Mar old Super Mario. Way. I said, I'm going yeah. to go over every ridge and find everything I can. But, again, seat time and feet time. And, and I noticed that a lot. You're ready to go. You you want to call and if it ain't happening this time it's, it's it, it you know but but I've seen you dial it and sit down too and I've heard you talk about it now we ain't got a chance to hunt a lot but I mean I you know I understand it, it, I want to get him going too and everything but I I think I have really pulled the harness back on my you know and and I've learned that I can get as much done sometime with that seat time like this morning i got up in a spot and turkey gobbled a little bit and kind of got sporadic and i heard a hen and a jake over there and and her you know and kind of just wasn't much gobbling and it wasn't really giving me a drink. And i said you know what time to pull up that seat and it's going quit using my feet because all i was going to do is get down in the creek or down where i couldn't hear and i just pulled up and listened and listened to kind of what happened over there and that gave me a lot to go on. I didn't kill him today, but, you know, you give me another day or two on him. Yeah, after I, some information I got there. some information, That's but right. I got it with my seat. And sometimes you got to go over there. And I remember as I came out of there, I actually went through and picked up with you guys. on, on a, You know, y'all came from one end of a holler, uh, Long Creek Bottom, and I came from another one. Sure. And you remember when I got it, I said, man, that. I scoped it out when I was down in and all that scratching and stuff. So my feet had to go do some of the work, but my seat can do a lot of it too. You kind of well, you give me some information. You know that last bird, like I explained before. You know that I think he was a two-year-old. He was insubordinate anyway. He wasn't a dominant bird. And I watched him when he uh, he drummed a little bit and half strutted. And then, like I told you, he uh, he took a few steps. He turned to his right and he took a few steps. Then all of a sudden, I seen him flip them wings. Right, the little wing. Oh yeah, you, you gotta you gotta be able to read turkeys. And there's a time to set and uh, and to call. There's a time to call loud. There's a time to call soft. There's a time to get on your feet and start walking. There's times that I'll be uh, just setting and and calling. And I might sit there depending on. If I did my scouting and the birds really like that area, I may sit there an hour or two. Uh, but then there's other times that, I mean, I'll be sitting there sometimes for two hours, and the next thing you know, I'm like, I've got to go find a turkey. Right. So, right, so now it's time to get on my feet, and I'm going to start walking, and I'm going to start calling, depending on the area and what the birds have been doing in the area, whether I'm going to be able to call loud and try to get one struck up, get set down and call him in. Uh, the big thing is... Any kind of calling you do, and I know you do this too, you got to sound as real as you possibly can, whether you're walking, clucking, and purring, uh, walking, yelping, and, and then there's a safety factor. You always got to watch out for that. Big thing is you got to use a Woodhaven call to get the realism that you really want, right? <laughs> yeah, hey, man. I, you know, we, 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 we pride ourselves in, in being uh, the realism unleashed. You know, that's the, the word that they kind of coined on a the, the phrase they coined on it but i mean real realism is that's what it is well, really trying to sound real yeah. and if you're using that woodsmanship and a good call and then using your ability to call so practicing how much you think practicing call and how to present that to a turkey i know competition calling makes you sharp how often do you i mean how much do you think practicing everything for the average guy what do you think i mean a guy needs to well, I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to get out uh, February 15th. Our rabbit season was over years ago, and that's when I started messing with my calls and going out and scouting and, and calling them birds and, and reading birds. Uh, a lot of guys want to know, what is it I need to do to get to be able to purr? Or what is it I need to do to be able to get that yelp? 
to me, a hen yelp, when she first starts yelping at that softer level, she's not real, real raspy. Most of them are. There are a few that are, but they're usually got more of a clear note on the front of that yelper in that very first note. And then as they get a little bit louder, then they start breaking into the rasp on the back end. And the same way, use that crystal call and you're using a real soft. That's the whole thing about the realism. You can get those real soft, high pitch, no rasp whatsoever. Clean. But the louder, yeah, when the louder you get, you start stroking that striker and pretty soon you start hearing the rasp on the back end of that. To me, that's real. And you need to get as real as you possibly can. The practice is a big thing. Whether you're using a, a box call or you're using a crystal or you're using a mouth call, it doesn't matter. You want to be able to get, you don't want to know where your sweet spots are. And that's on a mouth call because you're directing the air on a mouth call, whether you're directing it to the left or right down the middle on a V-cut or, say, to the right on a cutter call or whatever. You've got to get familiar with that call and where you want to put that air the same way with a striker. When you got a when you got a slate or a, a crystal call or aluminum call, there's a sweet spot on every one of them. You can, you know, you test that to where you've got to know, I'm going to put my striker right here on the edge. If I want a key key, I'm going to go right up there along with that glued edges and get that high pitch whistle. If I want to do some real soft yelps, I come in just a touch and I, and I give it to higher pitch yelps. And when I get want to get into the louder part, I increase my stroke and get more towards, you start getting down towards the middle and get that rasp in it. There's so many different things and you're not going to do that. When you go to the woods and you haven't run that call, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to know where to put that striker. Put a mouth call in, you don't know where to put the air until you start running a little bit. And it, and it takes practice to get the sounds, everything you want out of your box, uh, where to hold your hands, uh, out of the slate, out of the, out of the mouth call. So you got to get out there. You've got to, you've got to practice and you got to know your tools. And same way with the turkeys. You've got to get out and you got to learn the turkeys. Everybody wants to know, what are you going to do on a hung up gobbler? Well, mm -hmm. there are so many things you can do. And there's so many things that I can tell you that work for me, but it ain't guaranteed and it ain't going to work on every one of them. Uh, we all still have turkeys that turn around and they walk off the other direction following the hen. Some people say, get the hen mad. Start yelping at her. Get her going. Get her get her all fired up and bring her in. Well, that works on about half of them. The other half get mad at you and they turn around and they walk the other direction and take the gobbler with them. Yeah. So there's there's no rhyme or reason 100%. I mean, there's uh, things you just got to try and you got to learn on your own. Same way with woodsmanship. All that stuff we was talking about this morning about slipping up staying way low and he just peeking your head up can you get busted yeah you can if he's close enough you can but uh, when you get that two-year-old that won't come and you're really wanting to kill a turkey bad you use that and you same way he does he comes in there looking for that looking for that gobbler where's the dominant bird at you do the same thing to him next thing you know he's holding a load of that we got, apex <laughs> we got them uh unique turkeys unique up on them. Yep. yeah every that, once in that, a while that's the only way you're gonna get him <laughs> you're talking about that how you take the clear into the rasp even I, and i was doing it on the you know and I, I now sometimes you just because you just do what you do i mean you don't sure. think about how you got to tell the, to present that so people understand it but you know you're talking about listening to me do that on the crystal and i and i and i do do that but it's real so i mean i have practiced and that's what i work on and and i know what the call is capable of doing and everything but you know whether it's the mouth call or the crystal call or the box or anything sometimes if you're in that bubble there or tight to a call to a turkey you know you, you can do the soft stuff and it all works you ain't got to really get into that right. but if i'm noticed if i'm in distance from a turkey and i'm trying to strike and call or he's gobbled and i'm trying to you know get him engaged and or trying to see what i can do with him i noticed as you roll into the wrath it's kind of like getting a bite fishing you know i you start the front of the, the soft and everything but when you roll into that rasp it seems like that's when Bow. he takes that yeah, yeah I see, exactly yeah, i mean that's and that's something people need to know I, i'm I, you know i would want to know that if i didn't already i think folks would be picking need to pick up on the fact that as they do the call and start that easy easing into whether it's your pot call your mouth call whatever easing into it getting that <laughs> That's getting that that rasp is when it feels like he takes the bait. You know, that's oh, yeah. when that's when you get when you break into that and first two or three raspy notes. It seems like that's when they really hit it. I mean, you you kind of I, I agree a hundred percent. When I'm on that mouth call and I start off with that with those first off. <laughs> I mean, sometimes he'll gobble, sometimes he won't. If he's really really hot, it don't matter oh, yeah, what sounds yeah. I make. He's he's hitting it. But you get right. that one that's a little tougher, a little older, and he. 
you do that little soft little high pitch notes on there just a little soft and he may answer he may not but then when like you said how many times when you hit that rasp on the back end of that yelp wow that's when he really gets right. it and I don't, I don't know why that turns them on so much but i noticed when you was doing that and i know i know even simulating the call out there you're tightening and i try to tell people this so i'm gonna let you retell it and tell it in your thoughts and your ideas and your techniques but i'm noticing that you know and i try to tell people when we're doing on that high the high front end you're doing that you tightened up you tighten your jaw and i tell people that tighten uh, to get that front end that you're getting that <laughs> i mean that's everything's kind of tight and then how do you roll when i tell folks about dropping in that to get in that, we're tight. Start front, and then when you're going into the rest, drop their jaw. Are you kind? Are you kind of drop like, the jaw? Drop, drop a little bit of the tongue pressure. The whole thing with a with the latex on the mouth call is uh, the more tension you put on it, the higher pitch you're going to get, even up to the point of a kiki. Mm -hmm. When you want to, when you want to yelp after you kiki, then you're going to drop your, you're going to drop that pressure off of that, off of that reed, and allow that call then to work and get the rasp. Uh, anytime you're doing that, you're stopping that top reed from fluttering. Every reed, I don't care whether it's a venom, whether it's a blue cutter or, uh, you know, any mouth call the hammer, or even a, say a V cut, like a red wasp, the tighter you put that pressure up on her, then you start clearing your rat, your, uh, notes up because you're stopping that top reed from fluttering. And then once you begin to, once you want to get that rasp, then you loosen your tongue and I'm the same way you, I drop my jaw. Some people don't. Yeah. But whether you're dropping a little tongue pressure or you start dropping your jaw, then that's where you get that raspier back in on your yelp. Now, to me, I want to get uh, in every note. I want to keep that high front on the front end of the yelp and then drop over into the, you know, drop over into the rasp. <coughs> to me, that's what a hen does. You know, yeah. when she's yelping soft, she's doing, most times she's real clear when she gets louder. And sometimes uh, I've called hens in that sound what we would what we would call Jake yelps. Yeah. You know because they're just <coughs> almost almost into a, a calking mm -hmm. is what they're what they're doing. I called a hen in a couple of years ago and I had it videoed over my phone. I didn't have a camera with me. I'd have swore that was a Jake coming up there. And when she got there, I'm looking around, still looking for the Jake, and then she yelps. I'm like, it was hey, her that was her. Time. Yeah. So many times we think of. Uh, Gobbler yelps. I called I called uh, a gobbler in one time, and he sounded about as pretty a hen yelp as you could have ever. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he come in. Honestly, there was a there was six of them, and I thought I was calling in a gobbler and a hen. And what wound up being was uh, was a group of gobblers come in, but there was one of them that was yelping and cutting like a hen, and really? then and then the, then the other one was gobble. It just amazed me. Right. So many things we think in our own mind is one thing. Uh, ain't always the case when you get out in the woods. That's true. You well, know? you're talking about getting out in the woods. I know you're ready to go back hunting. This is, you want to get your last afternoon in in the woods yeah. here in Alabama and get out there and see if you can find you one. I hope you do. Uh, you know, I'm glad we've had you uh, in the woods and finding some turkeys. I just, you know, it's not always that easy to close the deal up here. But, again, I appreciate you being here, Billy. Good friend. Thank you, Mike. I mean, we're pr I'm proud to have you with us. I'll tell you what. There you have it, folks. Billy Yargis telling you how to get it done, and we're spending some time in the woods and enjoying ourselves. I tell you, we appreciate you watching and tuning in and listening to us, and we appreciate your support. And good Lord willing, we'll be back here again with some more information, and we'll keep doing things the Woodhaven way. <laughs>